Today is Tuesday, March 13th, 2012, and this is Vos de Sueños After Dark. Today, we begin the last of the viewer requests for this current contest. She will be loved by Strange Phantasm. Chapter 1. Plan a Party with Pinkie Pie. Mornings were always hectic at Sugar Cube Corner as Mr. and Mrs. Cake dashed about trying to get everything ready for the morning rush. Dear, can you fetch Pinkamina? asked Mrs. Cake. What is that silly girl up to? Pinkie Pie, called Carrot Cake. It's time to open the store. Okie dokie lokie. Gummy was just having a bath. I'll be down in two shakes of a gator's tail, she replied. As soon as Mr. Cake flipped the sign on the door over to open for business, Sugar Cube Corner's best customer burst through the entrance as if on cue, knocking down the yellow and orange stallion. Muffins! came an enthusiastic cry. Hi, Derby, said a nonplussed Mr. Cake, picking himself up off the floor. Pinkie Pie came downstairs with a wave of her usual bouncing gait. The self-proclaimed party pony quickly retrieved Derby's usual order of morning muffins from the kitchen, freshly made and irresistible. As the scent of baked goods wafted through the air, there came a rustling movement from the male pony's bags. A very sleepy filly poked her gray and blonde head out. Muffins! Dinky cheered tiredly. The pair sat down, devouring the treats at a rate rivaling even Pinkie Pie's food-inhaling abilities, with Derpy getting the blueberry muffins and Dinky eating the chocolate chocolate chip, her favorite. As they licked crumbs off of their faces, a ringing noise came from the mail bags, and Dinky lifted up a small clock for her mommy to see. Ah, uh, Derpy is running late, the mare said, racing out of the door and off into the sky with daughter in tow. Goodness, that pony sure is enthusiastic, said Mrs. Cake. <sighs> with a sigh, she added the muffins to the male pony's tab, which she kept running off on and forgetting to pay. Then the swirly-haired mare noticed an envelope on the floor where Derpy had been standing a moment ago. Oh dear, they were in such a rush, this must have fallen out of her bag. She turned it over to reveal an address. It read, Twilight Sparkle, Ponyville Library. Surprisingly enough, it didn't bear Princess Celestia's royal seal on it. Oh my gosh, 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 it's a letter for Twilight, beamed Pinkie Pie, bouncing in place excitedly. You'd better hang on to this until you get a chance to take it to her, said Mrs. Cake, hooping over the envelope. Pinkie Pie took the letter up into her room and placed it on the bed with a frustrated frown. She had a full day's work ahead of her before she'd get the chance to find out what the letter was about, and the curiosity would bother her all day. Eight hours later, the Earth Pony returned to her room, only to find her bed covered in scraps of paper. Gummy! She shouted. You naughty gator! You come out this instant, young man! He slowly crawled out from under the sheets, looking ashamed. He knew he was in trouble. After the baby alligator received a stern talking to, Pinkie Pie set about trying to salvage Twilight's letter. Once she had discarded the bits of envelope, Piggy arranged the letter like puzzle pieces slowly being fitted together. Fortunately, it wasn't very long, so getting the words back into their proper place didn't take much effort. Unfortunately, in order to do so, she had to read the letter, which she felt guilty about. But those feelings were quickly replaced by utter excitement. It read, Dearest Twilight Sparkle, you and as many friends as you like are cordially invited to attend the 18th birthday party of a one Miss Twilight Sparkle, to be held in Canterlot this weekend. Signed, Mr. and Mrs. Sparkle. Beneath it was a large smiley face with star-shaped eyes and the words, Come home! in a speech balloon. When she read those words, Pinky's eyes grew to the size of saucers, beaming with delight. A party! And not just any party, a birthday party in Canterlot where she would finally get to meet Twilight's parents. There was not a chance in Equestria she would miss this. Twilight Sparkle was nose-deep in a musty old tome about Star Swirl the Bearded, one of the greatest sorcerers to ever live. She was so engrossed with reading that when a pink snout edged into her peripheral vision, the bookworm screamed and nearly leapt out of her skin. Ah! What you reading? Pinkie Pie asked. Where the heck did you come from? The startled Twilight yelled. <laughs> the hospital, silly. See, when two ponies fall in love, they... Pinky! <laughs> I love that joke. It's a great joke. Don't you love that joke, too? Don't you just love jokes? Pinkie Pie! Oh, right. I almost forgot. She took in a deep breath, causing Twilight to cringe. There was no escape now. 
The most amazing, wonderful thing happened today. Derpy came by Sugar Cube Corner and dropped off a letter, and it was for Twilight. I was gonna store it until I could come over, but then Gummy tore it up, and I'm sorry for reading it, but I had to take it back together. And then when I read the letter, it made me so happy because I knew it would make you happy, and since you are one of my bestest friends ever, so I came over as fast as I could. Which turns out to be really fast because I was excited. And when I get excited, I can go really, really fast. The torrent of words overwhelmed the purple unicorn. From what she managed to snatch out of the tidal wave of unnecessary information, Twilight gathered that she had mail of some kind. With a sigh and a shake of her head, she simply held out a hoof, if only to prevent another outburst of words. She loved Pinkie Pie, but sometimes the pony could be verbose. Then Spike came down to see what all the fuss was about, which led to yet another sentence geyser from Pinkie Pie. When Twilight finally got the chance to read the letter, she promptly went into one of her famous panic attacks. Oh my gosh, how could I forget it was my own birthday? And now my parents want to meet my friends, but what if they don't approve my fence? What if they think I'm hanging out with the wrong crowd? They'll probably want me to stay in Canterlot and I'll never get to see my friends again! <laughs> At this point, she was practically hyperventilating. Pinkie Pie and Spike exchanged glances. She rolled her eyes, and Spike twirled his finger beside his head. This was his cue to launch into yet another you're being completely silly and unreasonable rants, for all the good they did. Come on, Twilight, didn't we go over this when Celestia came to hang out? You have amazing friends that any parent would approve of. I mean, there's Applejack, who's honest and hardworking, and then there's Rainbow Dash, and sure, she might be a little rough around the edges, but she's fun and cool and would never turn her back on any pony. And of course, there's Fluttershy. Who could dislike her? I mean, she's Fluttershy, for crying out loud. And then there's Rarity, who's smart and talented and beautiful and giving and, and beautiful. Okay, okay, Spike. We get the idea. <laughs> Jeez. Twilight said with a chuckle. Hey, you still haven't heard all the good things about Pinkie Pie! The party pony exclaimed. The purple unicorn braced herself. And now, on to Chapter 2. Chapter 2. I hope we hear a story from Chara Lee. The six friends plus one baby dragon had gathered at the carousel boutique. She told them all about the letter from her parents. They were thrilled. Well, gosh, Twy, of course I'll come along. I wouldn't miss your birthday for a whole sack of bits, said Applejack. I'd love to go, Twilight, Fluttershy stated. Uh, that is, um, if you really want me to. Oh, don't be silly, darling. It simply wouldn't be the same without you, Rarity interjected. Twilight glared at the back of her head. Sometimes the fashionista took liberties in conversation where she really had no call to do so. Not that she meant anything by it. It was just how she was. A trip to Canterlot. I've been wanting to go back there ever since the gala. She swooned. Hey, maybe Twilight's folks will bust out the baby pictures, Rainbow Dash said with a grin. Spike seemed to think that this was a great idea, never missing a chance to tease. Oh, yeah, especially the ones where she's got drool all over her nappy. Spike! Twilight blushed. Rarity seemed to remember something and spoke up. Uh, oh, dear. I shall have to bring Sweetie Belle along, I'm afraid. She was visiting this week, and I... I simply cannot find someone to watch her on such short notice. That's all right, Rarity. I like Sweetie Belle. She's the politest, most well-behaved filly in Ponyville, Twilight replied with a smile. Fluttershy rubbed her mane surreptitiously. As the host of frequent sleepovers, the less she said about Sweetie Belle's behavior, the better. Well, shoot, I reckon if little old Sweetie Belle's coming along, I ought to bring Apple Bloom. She ain't never been to a big city like Canterlot, and I bet she'll have a swell time, said the farm pony. I do believe that it's just about time for their school to let out. She told me the Crusaders switched classes to be together, Rarity said. We should go inform them at once. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. Canterlot! 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 The fillies shouted in excitement. Oh, oh my... That sounds lovely, girls. I I hope you have a wonderful time, said Miss Charlie. Scootily, you should totally come with us, Sweetie Belle cried. Charlie, who was kind and loving to all her students, was one of the most popular teachers around. She never failed to do everything in her power to make her students happy, 
so it should come as no surprise that she noticed a certain orange pegasus looking glum. I have to ask my dad, Scootaloo said quietly. Shirley whispered something into her ear, causing her to perk up somewhat. Scootaloo, if you want, I can talk to your dad for you. You will? Thanks, Teach, you're the best! You kids run along and play now, school's over. Glad for their freedom, the three fillies rushed out the door, leaving behind a small herd of mares and a dragon. For having the name Cherilee, she sure didn't look too happy at the moment. What was that about? Spike wondered aloud. The school teacher shut the door softly. I... I really shouldn't say anything, but when it comes to Scootaloo, I've become... concerned, she started. You see, her father is, to put it bluntly, a drunkard and a louse. I told her I'd come over and ask permission to go with you all for her, since confronting her father can be rather intense. We went to school together, he and I. He wasn't always like this, but he hasn't been the same since... A very sad expression came over Charlie's face. "'Since what?' asked Twilight, who was still relatively new to Ponyville. "'Scootaloo's mother died giving birth, I think. I think that he blames her for it. As a result, he doesn't treat her very well. He probably won't care at all if she's gone.' Twilight was outraged. <laughs> "'That's not right! It isn't her fault it happened!' "'Grief does strange things to people.' I just feel sorry for Scootaloo. She tries so hard to put up a tough front about everything, but deep down she's hurting. It was all too much for Fluttershy. She wished every pony could be more like the happy, carefree creatures she took care of. Hearing sad things like this always affected her deeply. She wiped her teary eyes before any pony noticed her. Meanwhile, Rainbow Dash was very, very quiet. The blue pegasus said nothing and headed for the door. She looked up at the clouds and gave a sad sigh before flying away. Rainbow Dash came from a bad situation herself. No wonder Scootaloo wants to be just like her. Cheerily had been dreading the conversation ever since she left the schoolhouse. It was every bit as unpleasant as she imagined. Sitting in their living room, she looked around and saw garbage everywhere. Empty pizza boxes, used napkins, and bottles. And bottles, and bottles, and bottles. Scootaloo sat very close to her, trying her best not to look intimidated. So you see, it would be a very good experience for her to share with her friends, visiting a new place like Canterlot, the teacher said. Tch! Canterlot? Bunch of good-for-nothing rich folks always looking down their snouts at every pony. She spends too much time with those so-called friends of hers anyways. Full in her head with nonsense. Scootaloo's father exclaimed. Dad! You be quiet. There's no such thing in this world as real friendship, and the sooner you learn that, the better. A friend is just some pony who'll turn on you the moment you need help. I had friends. Where were they when I needed them, huh? You're better off on your own. He glared at Charlie as if it were an accusation. Your friends were there for you, but you pushed us away when you started drinking, she said. I don't need a lecture from you, Missy. Anyways, if that brat leaves, who's going to do the dishes and clean this place up? I keep yelling at her to do them, but the dum-dum never listens. Cheryl Lee was angry. Very angry. You're the one who made this mess with your slovenly ways. You're an adult. It's not your right to make her clean up after you, and you know it. It's not fair. Since when has the whole damn world been fair? I know that better than any pony. He screamed, rounding on Scootaloo. Fine. You want to take off, brat? Then take off. I'm sick of the sight of you. After all, it's your fault that- I hate you! Scootaloo raced out the door, tears streaming from her eyes. Cheerily glared furiously at him. You don't deserve to have a daughter. And that was chapter two. I think I'm going to call it. Probably do two chapters at a time, though. Looks like I can handle that. So... Next week should be the next chapter of Past Sense, and after that I may go to So Long, or I may do the revisit of Le Petit Four. We shall see. I know Le Petit Four is very long. I don't know. Let me know. Actually, yes, vote. All of you go vote. Tell me what you want. Do you want Le Petit Four after Past Sense, or do you want the next chapter of So Long and Thanks for All the Ponies? Anyhow, 
This was chapters one and two of She Will Be Loved by a Strange Phantasm. This is Vos de Sueños signing off. Safe travels, everypony, and have a great week.